kind of difficult to remember, to be honest. I just discovered ballet with some like children of my class at school. I, I cannot really say why I felt so attracted by it, but I can remember this, sens this sensation like I have to do it. I, I don't know why, but this is made for me. Like it seems so attractive and kind of easy. Like I, I feel I'm made for it and I can do it. And exactly the same stuff happened when I started to paint. When you enter the Paris Opera Ballet School, it's so important, like all the pressure you have, all the engagement you get to going to this difficult school every day and all your family support you and your friends support you and there is a lot, lot of pressure just falling on you and you don't even think you can say, okay, I'm bored of it, I don't want to do it anymore. No, you just can't even imagine to say that. I never even thought about, could I do something else? I never asked, I never wondered myself, so... Yeah, you, you don't have really time to, to think about doing something else. You don't really have any kind of hobby. No, just your life is the school, actually. <laughs> what a question. What happened? Uh, what happened was I was in my last year at the school. So the final year is the most important ones. And well, I started to feel some pain in my legs and it's something quite common. I mean, when you're a dancer, you always, you know, it's hurting almost everywhere all the time. So you don't really care about it anymore. You don't even think it was painful and I had to dance like two weeks after. So I kept dancing, took some pills and medicines and stuff like this to just to hold it. And well, I made it. But the day after I was in the hospital because everything got really wrong and when I stopped to take the pills I realized I could even not move, like it was hurting so much. I got an infection in my bones in the hip so finally I ended up after one year with hip replacement which means I'm not able to dance anymore. When you've been dancing for so long and you had no other plan in life it feels like you don't have nothing actually. I have no more studies, I have no more objective in my life, I have no more job, I'm just starting from zero. And this is the moment I, I just met this artist friend who was a painter, abstract painter. So he just said, okay, you can come, I will show you my work, come to my studio. And I went there with absolutely no idea what I'm about to see. I just had this idea like, is it possible to be an artist? Like, I didn't even thought about this in this way, you know. You just meet someone and someone normal with a normal life, but he's painting. Maybe I can do better than him and even if it's not a competition, I feel like I have something to say with this technique, so I have to do it. He put some acrylic on the canvas, he just moved a little bit to make like the background and after with the knife he's drawing some lines. The background he was doing, just moving the canvas like this, that was actually what interested me the most because he was just doing it like very quick in five minutes for him it was not something important but just the background so he put like two or three colors just move like this and okay that's it uh, and I thought no you, you have to work on this part of the process way more because you can do something way more interesting than just moving three colors together slowly I just decided to be working a little bit more on the about the background to make just an artwork with the background by itself so, yes, I, I applied to the fine art school in Paris the day after because I thought that's what I want to do. They never accepted me, so I thought, okay, that's not a problem, I will do it by myself. People ask me what's your inspiration and of course my inspiration was dance, like I, I was missing dance, uh, especially the sensation of dance, uh, I wanted to find something about this, I wanted to dance again and I knew it was not possible. So, 
uh, I had this feeling like with all this acrylic paint moving on the canvas, maybe I cannot dance anymore, but I can find the same kind of sensations that I had when I was a dancer. So this was the main idea when I started. And after my inspiration came from my canvas themselves, like you do something and it gives you an idea to make a second one. And when you do the second one, you realize, oh, I can do it differently. So you do a third one. And in the third one, something happened that you never thought it could be possible. So we'll try another one to remake this strange thing that happened. And, and the other one, etc., etc. You, you make, you know, like kind of a line of each canvas is just a remake of the previous one. And we'll give you the idea to the next one. To me, the paint is not just a paint, it's real kind of material. It's, it's something I use in huge quantities. It's not something you take with a brush and you put like this on your canvas, you know. And by the way, I'm not using brush at all. I'm just splashing one liter or two liter or three liters in the canvas. And those big canvas here, it's like 20 liters of paint, each one. So you're really like in a swing pool of paint, like literally, you know. So you have this feeling of, the life of the material by itself and sometimes it's cracking and it's moving and even like one or two days after it's still moving because you have so much paint it takes a lot of time to dry. My painting is not making any reference to the real world. You have no gravity, you have no day and night, you have no time, you have no... It's just something completely out of nowhere, you know. So I like this idea of like you have the world with its rules and with its time and with what, what's happening and you have just something very small just behind living by itself. So it's just an image I have in my head but it shows you know this idea of something completely a part of everything. When you are a dancer, especially ballet dancer, you're controlling a lot. Like, all I learned during my childhood was just controlling and controlling and you have to remake every movement until it's absolutely perfect and say no, not the finger like this. Even the fingers and the look and like everything is controlled. When you get to the stage, you just let go everything. Like all this control you got, all this technique you have just give you the opportunity to be free after, like but with the technique. So. When I do that kind of artworks, it's all about control. You have to find exactly the right movement to splash the paint in the right uh, position so it will then flow correctly exactly like you expect. And it's all about trying to controlling a maximum the flows and the movement of the paint. So if you want to obtain what you want, you have to control the process and you have to know how to make it. So it's absolutely not about just letting go and just splashing the paint like you feel like, oh, I feel I have to put a huge bucket of red, so okay, I made, and I don't care about how it goes. It's, no, it's ab absolutely not like this. It's more about just finding the right movement and you work on your movement. And after maybe one year of repeating this movement, suddenly you know how to make it and you're free because you can make it as much as you want but it's completely controlled. With this installation, what we also wanted is like to create a kind of surprise, you know, a little bit like a magic box. Like, uh, from outside you cannot see anything, and you just enter and suddenly, when you're inside, you suddenly have everything. You enter this kind of room, because all the canvas are going to create kind of room and suddenly, yes, you have this surprise. And I think it's something important to create the effect of surprise and of mysterious something. You don't really understand how it happens, but it happens, you know. It's the kind of artwork that you probably better feel when you keep walking, 
So the idea is not of just standing in the center and looking around you. It would be about just moving and you see one and another and another and you see all those panels just um, coming in front of you and you feel this idea of a never-ending circle. This can be linked with um, the circle of life, you know, of the, just the regeneration, just reproducing and reproducing again and again. And you know this question of is the chicken be before the egg or the egg before the chicken and it's just no, they are all together forever, you know? And we have here that same kind of question, like, is it starting from here and this, f this shape has been generating the second one or is this one generating the next one? And you absolutely don't know where it starts because it's just some shapes of pain just uh, touching each other, just floating from one to another to another, etc. And you have no real end and no real beginning. And this is the main point, I think. When I, when I explain that it's something very physical, it's really something about dance, when I say uh, my body is hurting after painting because it's just so difficult to make one panel, even if it's just only two meters long, it's already a lot and it's very difficult. Sometimes people just don't believe me or even if they believe, they don't really understand why. So I wanted people to, to see directly how is it that all my body is involved in the act of painting. And it's not just something you do with one arm like this, but it's everything moving with the paint to make it move. So this is why I thought it's interesting to make it just in front of people. I, I will tell you something. It's a kind of paradox that after controlling you so much, suddenly you get free. Uh, but it's true, it's happening like this for a dancer and in the paint it's the same. 